kind of a cool thing, maybe it's a stretch, but science kind of shows that eating bacon in the morning could activate a pathway that allows you to burn a little bit more fat in the period between breakfast and lunch. We'll talk about that in a minute, but the purpose of this video is to actually break down bacon versus turkey bacon. A lot of you might be watching this video because maybe your doctors, maybe your friends have told you that you need to cut out the bacon, even if you're doing a low carb diet and that you need to switch over to something leaner, something lower calorie like turkey bacon. Now this video isn't to just bash turkey bacon by any means. I'm going to give you a solid comparison and why you may want to make an educated decision on what really is going to work best for you. So we'll break it all down, give you the profiles, give you everything you need to know about traditional pork bacon versus turkey bacon. You're tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays at 7 a.m. Pacific time. Bunch of other videos throughout the week as well. Uh, there's a red button there for you to subscribe. I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that. And then there's a little bell icon. If you hit that bell icon, it makes you part of the notification squad so you always get a little push notification whenever I go live. Also, I want to make sure you check out ButcherBox down in the description below. So if you're someone that eats good quality, grass-fed, grass-finished meat, then you're gonna to wanna to check out Butcher Box because they're cheaper than the grocery store and then they ship the grass-fed, grass-finished meat right to your doorstep. So for less money than going to the grocery store, with a couple clicks of the button, you can have good quality meat getting right to your doorstep. And I'm talking good quality stuff, good quality fillets, good quality bacon, good quality ribeyes, everything that you'd be into. So after you watch this video, make sure you check them out. But now, let's talk about some bacon for a minute. The first thing I need to address here is the fatty acid profile. Not all fats are created equal. And if you haven't watched a lot of my videos before, then maybe you're unaware of this, but a fat is not a fat is not a fat, okay? They all do different things within our bodies, okay? And up until recently, everyone thought that saturated fats were bad, but typically saturated fats are some of the safest fats that we can eat because it's not just about clogging our arteries and stuff like that. No, it's about what the chain reaction of those fats is in our bodies, okay? So saturated fat is a more stable fat which means it doesn't go as rancid, which means it doesn't react with as many things negatively in your body, but most importantly, it does somewhat of the opposite of what people thought it did. You see, saturated fat helps get rid of lipoprotein A. Lipoprotein A is something that circulates in our bloodstream and has a high affinity for the arterial wall. What that means is lipoprotein A will hit the arterial wall and trigger a cascade that ultimately leads to plaque and ultimately leads to atherosclerosis. Saturated fat actually helps clear out lipoprotein A. Okay, so it's very, very important. Now, saturated fat can be used by the body in a lot of different ways. So my point in saying this is, although pork bacon has more fat in it, it has more fat coming from the right place, which again is high quality saturated fats versus low quality polyunsaturated fats, which we'll talk about in a second. You're gonna have a full fat education here along with bacon education. So normally I'm not the biggest fan of choosing a fatty cut of meat. If you watch my videos again, you know that I'm usually saying eat a leaner cut whenever you can and try to control the fats from other sources. But when it comes down to bacon, it's a little bit more cut and dry. You see, if you're comparing like a bacon piece to um, like a ribeye, bacon has a clean line between the meat and the strip of saturated fat. Whereas like a ribeye, you have this marbling where you don't really control all of it, okay? Some of it could be saturated fat, some of it could be polyunsaturated. At least with bacon, the fat you are getting is purely saturated. But let's talk about turkey for a second and compare that. You see, turkey bacon is just light white meat turkey and dark meat turkey all ground together and then pressed into a piece of bacon. So ultimately, yes, the overall fat content is lower but the kinds of fats that are getting through to the end result, the end piece of bacon, are much lower quality because we're not getting a clean piece of saturated fat. We're getting a mix, a hodgepodge of all kinds of lower quality fats throughout the entirety of that turkey, okay? So the dark meat could have a bunch of oils in it that aren't saturated fat, but are low quality oils that have been seeping through from the very low quality feed that the turkeys eat. So you're almost better off to have slightly more fat coming from a regular piece of bacon than less fat coming from the turkey bacon. Now we're gonna talk about the full breakdown of fats and everything like that with bacon in a second, but it's just very important that you know that the fatty acid profiles do matter. So again, I'm gonna say it again. The amount of fat, the smaller amount of fat that you get from turkey bacon is probably going to have more of a negative impact on your body than the larger amount of slightly higher quality fat 
coming from pork bacon. And now let's break down the profile a little bit. So pork bacon, when you look at it, it's generally 40 to 50% saturated fat. Okay, we've talked about that. I don't need to beat a dead horse there. Okay, now then we've got about 40 or 50% again of a specific monounsaturated fat, typically oleic acid, and then a small 5 to 10% being polyunsaturated fats. This merits a quick breakdown of why these monounsaturated fats are better than polyunsaturated fats, okay? So listen closely. When you have a fat, okay, you have multiple bonds that are bonded with hydrogen. A saturated fat has all the bonds completely taken up by hydrogen. That's why it's saturated. Every bond is saturated. A monounsaturated fat has one mono bond that is not saturated, that does not have hydrogen. So it has one open seat. Think of it like a dinner table. Okay, you've got a dinner table with 12 people at it. Okay, saturated fat has every single seat occupied. Okay, it's fully saturated, the table is saturated. Then you have monounsaturated. You've got the exact same table, except there's one seat available. Then you have polyunsaturated, which means multiple seats available at the table. What does this mean? It means that if the food is saturated, it has less places for an invader to come in and ruin the fat and make it rancid. So a monounsaturated fat only has one space available to go bad. What that means for us is that we have a higher quality fat than something that has the availability for lots of invaders to come in and sit down. That's why things like specific oils, like olive oil even, that is a polyunsaturated fat, although healthy, can go very unstable very quickly, okay? Now, the whole purpose in saying this is that the oleic acid, which makes up a good majority of the bacon, also has some very powerful effects. Now, here's where the whole fat burning thing comes in. Oleic acid has the ability to activate cyclic adenosine monophosphate and also turns on protein kinase A. Now, this is critical when it comes down to allowing your body to utilize its stored energy. Cyclic adenosine monophosphate kicks in when you are in between meals, basically. And it allows your body, it tells your body to take the fat that's on your body and put it into the bloodstream. Then and only then does fat loss really occur. So it's been found that oleic acid upregulates this, which is exactly why I came to that simple theory that, well, if you eat a little bit of bacon with breakfast, you get the oleic acid, you actually upregulate this process and then it makes it so you could be burning more fat between breakfast and lunch. And the reason that you probably get more of an effect in the morning is simply because your body's already in a bit more of a fat burning mode in the morning than it is in the afternoon. So a little bit of bacon with breakfast and a little bit of saturated fat if you're doing a low carb keto diet might just be perfect for you. For those of you that are interested, it does this all through a specific genetic pathway known as the SIRT3 pathway. So SIRT3 pathway is just a genetic pathway that allows specific uncoupling proteins and specific uh, protein kinase A's to turn on. So it actually allows us. That's a whole genetic pathway. I've done other videos on that if you're interested in that. Okay, so now let's quickly look at turkey again for a second. There's some other things we need to consider. Okay, one of the biggest things we have to consider is ractopamine. Okay, ractopamine is something that they feed turkeys to really plump them up to really grow them fast. It is not a good thing. It's an asthma-like medication, works on different adrenergic receptors within the turkey to basically make it so that they just gain a bunch of weight. Now this, of course, can trickle in through us, especially when you're talking about getting a little bit of fat from that turkey, right? The fat that's seeping through into whatever we're eating could very well have stored forms of this. Now the FDA has made some statements about it and yada yada, but the usual stuff. Some to be very careful of. Then again, with turkeys, for so many years, they were given specific antibiotics that have actually proven to make them antibiotic resistant. So that might be the reason why we end up seeing so many more instances of salmonella when it comes down to turkey and chicken or just white meat in general. I'm not anti-white meat, but I will say if you're comparing, honestly, pork to chicken or turkey, you might be better off with the pork simply because of the quality of what's going in. But more importantly, the antibiotics and the growth factors that are not being added to pork. Now, I know that a lot of you still don't like how pork is raised. It's still very unethical in a lot of ways. So one of the things that I would recommend, there are companies out there that have wild boar and things like that. That's a better quality there if you're interested in that. Um, but again, not always the most sustainable thing to get your hands on. So let's recap really quick. Fatty acid profile is much better with the pork bacon. Turkey bacon is much leaner and lower calorie. Okay. 
pork bacon ends up having more saturated fat, which is a fat that can actually be used and help you out in the risk of cardiovascular disease. Turkey bacon has less fat, but the fat that's in it is going to be high omega-6 and trigger an inflammatory response within your body. Uh, Protein-wise, you might get a little bit more protein out of the turkey bacon, so slightly less protein out of the bacon bacon. Okay. Then lastly, let's take a look at taste. Okay, this is something that's entirely up to you, but I think most people will say that they like the taste of pork bacon better. So when you actually weigh them out side by side, if you're counting calories and you're just diligent about counting calories, stick with your turkey bacon. But if you're on a low carb, higher fat diet and you're focused on getting the most abundant mineral and nutrient profile that you can get, regular pork bacon is probably gonna be the route for you. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. If you have ideas for future videos, make sure you click on the bacon below. I mean, comment below.